Ladies and gentlemen, we are jumping right into a requested video. <laughs> I'm so sorry to tell you all that this is what we are doing today. Boy Reincarnates is a useless vending machine but gets stronger every time he sells an item. Don't pay attention to the title of this YouTube video because I don't understand the, the anime recap enclave of the YouTube asshole. There is an anime that just start, came out called Reborn as a Vending Machine, Now I Wander the Dungeon, and I am not watching that whole anime because it's literally an isekai anime about a guy that got reborn as a vending machine. So... So we are jumping right into the recap covering the entire Born as a Vending Machine anime. The whole anime, all the plot twists, all the characters, and now I do know one thing about the Vending Machine anime. There's a lot of Rule 34. I, I don't know, I've never seen as much Vending Machine cock as I have over the last couple of weeks, but from what I hear this show is actually hilarious. The story begins by the lake, as our hero finds Let's the surroundings go. unfamiliar. He suddenly remembers he was driving along on his scooter when a vending world. machine ahead of him got loose. Oh my god, he was killed by a vending machine? I didn't and know that! And it ends up smashing into him. He is surprised he is still alive, but he soon finds he is unable to move. He suddenly hears his voice, welcoming customers to use him, That's right. and he realizes welcoming customers to use him realizes he has been reincarnated That's as it. a vending reincarnated as a vending machine in a fantasy universe and women with massive breasts show up and decide damn this 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 would be sick vending machine we learn he was actually a vending machine fanatic so he is surprised <laughs> man killed by the thing he loved most surprisingly happy about his new form he admires his affordable products and sleek design he admires his affordable products <laughs> no Fine. But he soon realizes his new form might be a problem. He wonders if it was thanks to God that he was turned into the Let's thing go. he loved. Common God W. And he decides to just accept things. He is able to say the standard things for a vending machine, such as insert a coin. <laughs> he can't even talk! He can only say the standard things for a vending machine like insert coin? And thanks for buying. He thinks about what else he can do, trying to understand his new body. He sees some writing, and he realizes it's the items he is selling. Damn. There are currently only two items, mineral water- Can't wait for Matt Pet to make a video on how it's physically impossible for a vending machine to be alive. That's gonna be wild. Water and corn soup. He hears a voice telling him that he can change the items by spending points, and he sees he has a thousand points. There's a leveling up skill-based system in this isekai about a guy who became a vending machine and immediately gets suffocated by breasts everywhere. That happens soon. Spoilers on the bobs. I Trust me, I know. Points are converted for money, which are then used to replenish or change the goods sold, or even gain additional functions. There's a power system! After they actually had the, the audacity to make a thought-out power system for Boy Reincarnates as a vending machine. Further investigation, he learns that the points allow him to keep different items at different temperatures, sure, sure, and he sure. is also able to warm up frozen food. He checks out what other items he has, and he finds he has a range of items that he would buy from vending machines oh when he was God. alive. Oh my, this is the wildest thing I've ever seen. He decides to try changing his item to milk tea, so he spends 10 points, and the milk teas appear inside him. Damn. It seems he can gain 1 point per 100 yen, and as he learns more about himself, he finds he doesn't require electricity for power, but he consumes his points for power instead. He uses 1 point per hour, which means he uses 24 points per day. Since he still has 990 points, this is the wildest he can thing operate in the world. for about a month. I, I cannot get over that they actually... Th this power... This is like Nen levels of complex power system. Japanese men just fantasize about becoming vending machines, I guess. You stick your cock into one vending machine and suddenly you're a vending machine fucker? I hate how society labels people. But he thinks he shouldn't waste his points until he can get a more steady income. But he realizes he is in the middle of nowhere, and after a day, he starts to panic. Thinking he oh is doomed God. because no literally counting down to his own demise. What is this torture? No one will ever use him. However, at that moment, a giant frog appears. It approaches Rude. him, but it gets startled by his voice welcoming it. The frog starts attacking him with its club, and oh his durability gets lowered. Oh my he God! Learns that if his durability reaches zero, he will break and become unusable. The frog keeps on attacking him. Bro, frog just wanted the anime to end in episode one and spare us all an entire series about this. And he sees his durability rapidly decreasing. He notices there is a magic. He has dexterity stats? Stat. So he is surprised there is magic in this world. 
he is able to repair his durability with his point. He sees a humanoid frogman attacking him, and he's surprised there's magic in this world. So he Let's thinks go. he can just wait for the frog to get bored, but the frog suddenly calls its <laughs> friends. Seeing the frog's axe, he starts to panic, and he tries to find a function that will save him, but there is nothing useful. Yep, he's a vending machine. The frogs keep beating him up, but he suddenly notices he can gain a blessing from God. Sure. He is able to choose from a number of different abilities, Let's so go. he gains the barrier ability, and he is able to push the frogs away. He thinks he is invincible, but his points start decreasing rapidly as the frogs keep on attacking him. Bro. The frogs eventually get bored, and he manages to survive. He uses his points to repair his durability, and we see he is down to 311 points. A few- Can you believe that they made a show about this? Like, I thought reincarnated as a vending machine, to, like, he'd be in a city. They literally, he gets teleported as a vending machine in the middle of butt fuck nowhere. Still hasn't been able to sell anything, but a girl suddenly appears. She has great titties, by the way, just letting you know. She is on alert at first. Dude, look at this character design. Why couldn't Eminence and Shadow have character designed this good? <laughs> but she notes how she is starving, saying she isn't Randomly stops in the middle of the street, starts crying that she's hungry. And they're, oh, what a coincidence, there's a vending machine there. About to be a hunter. It seems she was hunting the frogs, but she hasn't had any luck. That's rough. She notices the vending machine, but she is unfamiliar with what it can do. She is startled when she hears his voice, welcoming her and telling her to insert a coin. The girl wonders what kind of coins it takes. She tries a copper coin, but it's not accepted, oh, and he learns he needs to acquire the coin conversion function to accept it. You are joking! He quickly- And he can't speak either! ...learns the skill for 100 points, and his prices change, allowing the girl to realize it will cost her one silver coin. She thinks it's expensive, but she decides to try it anyway because she is starving. Bro, she, she's just ripping them off. Man, is the, he's a crypto crypto YouTuber gets reincarnated into another world. He becomes excited to finally have his first sale, and the girl chooses his soup item. She takes it out. Man, she just wants that liquid. She wants his liquid for the first time. Out from him, and she is surprised it is still hot. She tastes the soup, and she finds it delicious, Let's saying go. it's better than anything else that's around. He is overwhelmed with pleasure. Uh, what? After she gives a girl his liquid and he's overwhelmed with pleasure? To bring her such joy, and the girl wonders what other items he has. She enjoys his milk tea as well, and she ends up buying a few more corn soups. So he ended up making about six silver coins, Let's which go. converts to 60 points. Girl ends up falling asleep beside him. This is literal vending machine privilege, brother. It is not fair. But he protects her with his barrier, seeing her as a precious customer. Why would he waste points on a barrier? Man is freaking simping right now. When the girl wakes up, she thanks him for all the food. Dude, this vending machine got more action than 99% of my chat. And she is startled when she hears his voice. She wonders if he is able to talk, because she knows someone who invents tools that have magical power, so she wonders if he can only say certain lines. She notices he can understand her, and they come up with a way to talk, where he will say hello to answer yes, and thank you to answer no. She introduces Damn. herself as Lamas, and she starts trying to learn more about him. He can't tell her his name, so she decides to call him Boxo. Hi Boxo, how are you? Get it? Because you're a box. Cause you're a, cause you're a fucking box, so I'm calling you box so. She wonders if he is lonely, and she suggests moving him. He agrees to this, and Let's the girl suddenly picks with her. This scene him up. This scene changed everything. Now, originally, I wasn't ever gonna watch the recap for this anime because it sounded incredibly stupid. But then I saw side boob from the back. Ladies and gentlemen, this unlocked a neuron in my brain that I didn't know existed. It just, it, I was just so impressed. I was damn near enthralled. It changed my perspective on life itself. This is everything I've been missing for so long. He can't believe she is so strong, but he is glad to finally move. Woman, it turns out Lamas has the blessing of might, which explains her insane strength. Let's go. She takes a break after a while, wanting to have some more corn soup. But he thinks the soup isn't very filling, so he decides to find her something else. What? Lamas is surprised seeing he can change his items, and she decides to try it out. It's a can of potato chips, and she- On what, In what world is a can of potato chips more filling than corn soup? Finds it absolutely delicious, eating multiple cans, and he manages to recover back up to 320 points. They make it back- Who has cans of chips? Back to the village, and the guards wonder what she has brought back. 
She explains it as a magical tool that can grant items in exchange for money, saying she found it by the lake. Let's go. She wonders if it's okay to keep, and the guards mention it's normal for whoever finds something in a dungeon to become its rightful owner, sure. and Boxo wonders if they are in a dungeon, but thinks it's not possible because he is able to see the sky. The guards are surprised he can talk, so they think he could be sold for a high price. No! But Mama says she is taking him no! to meet her friend. The guards try buying from Don't sell him to someone that has less boob. And they are instantly impressed, going on to try all of his items. They tell Lamas to bring him around once in a while, and Boxo bring thinks- Bring him around! He's a vending machine on a food cart! Business is looking up. They get inside the village, and Lamas notices a girl being bullied. She beats up one of the thugs, but we see that despite her strength, she struggles to land a hit on the- She's just darkness from Konosuba! I'm incredibly strong, I just miss my attacks! I don't know how you miss that stuff, but sure. Man. The men decide to run away, and Lamas checks up on the girl. Lamas goes to the inn, and her friend Manami rushes to her. Gl Bro, let's freaking go. Man got a harem by just existing. This is a new level of trying to make a relatable Riz Lord character. Glad that she returned unarmed. It seems Lamas was left behind by some other hunters, but Manami tells her she has helped her spread bad rumors about them. She turns her oh, attention nice. to Boxo, and she thinks Boxo. Lamas has brought back more junk, but Lamas claims he is super useful. As Lamas sets him up outside, Minami knows she wants to go to the surface to show Boxo off to her friend, but Minami wonders Wait, how so she will pay for the transfer That's so cool. circle. Dude, is there actually good world building in a show where a main character is just a guy who got reincarnated as a vending machine? I'm a little lost. Despite being able to see the sky, they are apparently in a dungeon called the Clearflow Lake. It seems a transfer circle is required to leave, That's so but it cool. seems Lamas has spent all her money on his items. Of course. Oh, oopsie. I had money that I literally needed to survive to leave this dungeon, but oh, your milk was so good. Onisan, Onisan, give me more milk. Munami tells Lamas to make some money working at her inn, and she hopes Boxo will also help to attract customers. The people are soon attracted by how good his items are, and he is able to sell quite a lot. At night, Lamas takes him over to the guards at the gate, but they eventually get bored of his items, so he thinks it's time he added some new items. It seems he has been able to sell over 400 items, Let's and he go. now has over 3,000 points. He suddenly glows, and the guard is surprised to see there is a new item. It costs 3 silver coins, but the guard is excited to try Bro. something new. They this is the craziest thing in the world. It's like he is... He is giving the ultimate technology to the city, a village that has been forever ravaged in this endless dungeon, this endless night. And with his ability of being a vending machine, he is able to bring them the much needed difference and, and technology in their lives. They wonder how to eat it, but there are luckily instructions on the can. Oh, no. It turns out to be stew, and the guards are impressed by the delicious flavors, right. wanting to buy even more. After a few days, Word about his new item spreads around the village, and it seems to be a big hit. But during the day he makes it unavailable, so he doesn't compete with the inn's restaurant business. Damn, what a good man. Look at this dude. His ability is destroying the economy, eating all the money. That's so true. Money is supposed to be able to flow back into the economy at some point, but this is just money disappearing. He's literally destroying the economy. The girl that Lama saved approaches him but she gets startled by his voice, so she throws a rock- Does this happen to every single character? Every single character! The random character approaches him, gets startled by his voice, attacks him, finds out- Oh! He's a vending machine! ...get him and runs away. Their days continue, as Lamas takes him over to the guards at night. She talks to him as they walk, oh, and she hopes they weird. can talk for real one day, which is why they need to get- Girl fell in love with a vending machine, where the only thing the vending machine can say is welcome and thank you. Get to her friend on the- That is a next level of writing female characters to just make you fall in love with them. It's like, yep, ladies and gentlemen, I have good news. All of you guys in chat, despite being kind of lame, <laughs> despite being incredibly alone and cripplingly depressed, you have a shot with her. The surface. Lamas is glad to have found him, Aww. and he thinks that being reincarnated as a vending machine isn't so bad. What a fucking sip. The next day, Boxo is terrified when he finds himself confronted by a bear, but the bear actually <laughs> turns out to be the director bear. of the Hunters Association. The Hunters Association? Damn, I'm rewatching Hunter Hunter now, I didn't remember any of this. He is impressed seeing Boxo, and he is there to ask for their help. 
He mentions that they are planning to attack the base of the frog monsters, and he wants them to come along. Lamas wonders why he wants to bring Boxo. Yeah, why does he want to bring Boxo? Since he can't fight, but the director says his ability to provide warm and ready-to-eat food on the go would be invaluable for the hunters, and he promises to keep them safe. Lamas isn't too sure, but Boxo thinks if they ignore the frog monsters, it might end up being dangerous for the village. Boxo is thinking this stuff? Dude knows zero zilch about any of the politics at all about this world at all. And he's like, mm, yes, I think that she's making a miscalculation. It actually probably would be more uh, prevalent if we actually did wipe them out. What are you? You're a freaking box. <laughs> so he agrees oh to go. They head off three days later, and we learn that it seems to be breeding season for the frogs. So there are an abnormally high number of them. And according to the director, why would they attack in breeding season? They are making sure to protect the transfer circle in their village because it's the key to getting in and out of the dungeon. Besides the hunters from the village, there are also a group of hunters known. Dude, I feel like I've seen all of these characters of the dungeon. before. Oh Besides the hunt. Okay, so these are just the generic side characters. They're never gonna do anything. Look at how boring their hair colors are. Just from the village, there are all these characters are obviously gonna be important because they they look iconic in some way. But they, I feel like I've seen them everywhere. Oh my god, look at these guys who are joining in on this raid, excited to make some money. The hunters take a break, and Lana sets Boxo down. She is approached by one of the hunters. See, this is just the Don Machi cast that showed up by accident in the vending machine world. Who tells her not to be so worried because they are there to protect them. Oh, nice. He is interested. Why is he here? Why did they want to bring a vending machine? To seeing Boxo, and Lamas explains how to use him. The man decides to try it out, picking out a lemon. Damn, man has to trapped as a vending machine, giving his milk to men. Tea, and he is in. Fellas, is it gay to give your milk to a hot guy? Pressed by the packaging. The man tries the drink, and he finds it delicious. He wonders where it all comes from, but Lamas mentions Boxo seems to just refill himself. The man becomes even more interested, so he calls over his vice captain Filmina. She addresses Filmina. him as Captain Kelroy, and Boxo is surprised to learn that he was the boss. Kelroy calls Filmina an expert about magic tools, so he asks her if she knows anything more about Boxo. That is not a tool. She takes a look at him, that is but she ends up character. sensing no magic power from him saying he just seems like a block of iron. Kelroy mentions how he magically seems to refill himself, thinking the items could be coming from another dimension. The items are come. And Filmina suggests it could be the power of a blessing, but she finds it unlikely. Kelroy thinks it's a mystery, but decides to just be thankful to have him there. The director Double tells them they are camping for the night, and Boxo thinks it's his time to shine. Everyone lines- Man's entire purpose is so that instead of needing to actually cook, <laughs> <laughs> you could just get this shitty vending machine food on the go. I cannot believe that they actually wrote this whole anime. They wrote an entire novel and they animated it. I am like blown away. It's up to buy from him and we see he has added cup noodles for this expedition. Oh, Everyone finds it delicious and Bo to get hot water. Boxo takes note of a girl that seems to have a big appetite. Boxo takes note of a girl with a big appetite. Lamas gets to know her, and she introduces herself as Sui. Later at night, the director joins them, and he tells Lamas the frog den is about three hours away. He gives her the choice to either stay at the camp, or join the hunters on the battlefield. Lamas is okay with going since she is a hunter herself, yes! but she worries about Boxo. Oh, However, I'm Boxo right. says he doesn't mind, so they agree- WHAT?! Boxo don't talk! ...to join the battle as well. The next day, they reach the frog base, but there is a the thick mist, base. and they are walking through mud. The director tells them to attack, and we see the hunters taking out the frogs. Kelroy tells his team they will get paid extra the more they kill, they so they get fired frogs, up. Bro? Lamas wants to do her best, but Boxo... But she's carrying a massive vending machine for some reason. Why is she carrying him? ...worries for her, because she has trouble landing her hits. A frog suddenly jumps at her, but she easily blows it away. She is surprised she landed a hit, and it seems having Boxo on her back is giving her better balance. Oh my god, oh my god, I'm realizing it. it the neuron is activated. That means, how does that balance? How does that balance? How does that balance? Surprised she landed like, a hit, whoa. and it seems having Boxo on her back is giving her better balance. Neutron star titties, brother. We see the Misfits team taking out the frogs, and Filmina uses water magic. Of course she can only fight now when she has a massive colossal thing on her back. Magic to take out three at once. 
but even more frogs appear, and Kelroy finds it strange that there are so many. We see they are surrounded, and Boxo starts to get worried. The frogs charge at them, and Sui protects Lamas, but there is suddenly a frog that lunges for Sui. Lamas prepares to protect her, but Boxo's <laughs> barrier blows the frog away. <laughs> guys actually fighting <laughs> out of this world titties combined with the epic barrier has formed an incredible team this is an out of the world fight i have never in my life of watching incredibly dumb anime fights incredibly stupid anime fights anime fights that make no sense dude hunter hunter is one of the best anime where the two main characters use yo-yos and fishing rods for fight scenes i have never in my life ever seen a dumber anime fight than what we have just witnessed we have just witnessed a vending machine on the back of a little girl committing the most incredible uh, combining the power of impenetrable defense and balancing out her plutonium titty <laughs> they formed the ultimate tag team the girls are confused seeing the barrier wondering what's going on but boxo is glad he protected them he buys a new ability for a thousand points to help expand his field of view. Long <laughs> Man developed the ability to turn his neck. Oh my god. This tells him to watch her back and Kelroy compliments her on her strength. Lamas blushes hearing this and Boxo warns her they are being attacked. But she is too distracted to hear him. Women. So he ends up using his barrier again to blow them away. <laughs> this is the stupidest thing in the world. I is the dumbest thing I've ever seen and I actually kind of like it! Kelroy is surprised seeing the barrier and Lamas claims it must be Boxo's power which makes Kelroy even more interested in him but Boxo uh -oh. feels he might be dangerous uh -oh. they end up beating all the frogs and Kelroy tells his team to cut their tongues so they can get paid by the association Makes Filmina sense. tells yes. him to help saying it's gross but Kelroy claims he became the captain so he wouldn't need to deal with that Causing his Based. team to call him a tyrant. Based! Based! Tyrants! Listen, listen. Hot take? Dictatorships aren't so bad. <laughs> they wonder what they should do next, and Kelroy suggests they could help out on the front lines. Filmina reminds him their job is to protect Lamas and Boxo. Kelroy wants to make more money, right. saying he can give them all a bonus, and Filmina suggests it's up to Lamas. Kelroy begs Lamas to go, and Lamas is happy to help the hunters on the front lines. <laughs> Why? Who knows? They take out some more frogs, and there are a bunch of hunters that are injured. <laughs> These teeny little cuts. Oh, injured. Oh. Lamas carries them to the wagon, and... Bro, she's carrying a freaking truck on her bag. Boxo thinks about how he can help. He comes up with an idea, he and comes. he decides to give them some drinks for free. He could have done that all along? Wait a second. He has this girl. This girl that's carrying him around for the entire show, literally carrying him. And sh then she wants a chocolate bar and she needs to pay him for it? Hunters are glad to have him, and the director thanks Kelroy for coming to their rescue. The director notes that there were twice as many frogs as expected, and Lamas wonders how it's possible. The director thinks it must mean that the Frog King has arisen and bought- <laughs> The Frog King has arisen! I love how they made the villains of this show the, the Frog King! So imagines how strong it could be. The director asks for Kelroy's help to defeat it, and he tells Lamas to stay behind to help treat and right, feed the go. wounded hunters. Later that night, Lamas gets called away to help some of the other hunters, but there is a shady man that approaches Boxo. No! Boxo realizes he is after his money, so he gives him a free drink. But as the man tries to grab it, he burns the man's hand with a hot soup. Ladies and gentlemen, forget the plutonium titties that we've just seen. We have just now seen the worst fight scene in the history of anime. He burns the man's hand with a hot soup. Boxo laughs at him, but the man prepares to bust him open. However, Lamas returns just in time, and she was he was able to buy enough time with the epic soup troll technique. She ends up And he was wearing gloves too. Oh my god. Knocking him out. Just wait, his fight scenes get better. I cannot believe there are people here that actually watch this show. And the man is restrained. There is a disturbance in the distance, and the Frog King suddenly- <laughs> The Frog King actually looks like how he imagined it. ...appears. The hunters wonder why it's there, and they all start to panic. Lamas loads Boxo on the wagon, but the Brother. pigs are too scared to move. Lamas ends up letting them go, and the hunters wonder what- The pigs are too scared to move, so she lets them go, and they run away. What? She is doing. 
but she ends up trying to pull the wagon with her strength. Oh my God. Boxa wonders what he should do, thinking his barrier isn't enough to save everyone. He tries to think of a way to slow down the monster, looking through his item list for ideas. He ends up buying coke, and Lamas thinks he has a plan. They grab the coke, and he buys the form- He doesn't buy Mentos. If he buys fucking Mentos, I am losing my shit. Change function, turning himself into a candy machine. He bought Mentos. He literally did it. I, I was like actually fucking joking. I, I cannot actually believe this is real. There's no way they actually made this in an anime. There's no way they had this culmination raid boss fight that all the hunters are running away from. All these epic- I, I was- I was joking. What the ever-loving, fart-sucking, cuck shit have I seen? He is filled with Mentos, and Lamas wonders what she needs to do. He struggles to explain his plan since he can't talk properly, so he just keeps telling her to insert coin. She doesn't understand what he is trying to tell her. Insert cock. Insert cock! And the Frog King approaches. This is the best version of Dr. Stone! Oh my god! The hunter thinks he must be broken, but Lamas can tell Boxo is trying his best. There's nothing Boxo can do, but the thief suddenly wakes up, seeing the Frog King, and he demands to be freed, not wanting to die. But a hunter stuffs his mouth to shut him up, but he starts to choke, so they give him some of the coke. That is so unbearably stupid! The amount of setup that needed to go into this scene! They, did, they thought that putting coke in his mouth was a better idea than taking the candy out that was choking him? Causing him to explode. This gives Lamas an idea, oh my and God. she figures out Boxo's plan. She explains it to the other hunters. This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And they end up using the coke to blast the frog in its eyes. Kelroy and the director make it back in time, and they manage to take out the frog king. They all celebrate. That is the worst fight scene I've ever seen in my life. This is like some Baki the Grappler levels of bullshit that no one has ever in the history of time even conceived. How did they think of this? This is brilliantly stupid. They have managed to make a show about a guy who became a vending machine be overpowered in an isekai anime. I cannot believe that this exists, but it does. I am so impressed. I am so impressed. Eat your heart out, Naruto versus Pain. And the director apologizes to Lamas for putting her in danger and he thanks Boxo for saving them all, telling them their mission is complete. As they head back, they suddenly notice that the village was attacked. Lamas rushes back to Damn, the inn. Damn, turns out taking the entire forces out of the village wasn't such a good idea after all, who could have thought? But it's been completely destroyed, and she worries about Manami. However, Boxo manages to calm her down, and Lamas thinks Manami How? could have evacuated to the hunt. Insert coin, insert coin. You're so right for that, King. <laughs> what is that? Hunters Association. We see a giant double-headed snake, which was responsible for all the damage, and Lamas finds the two guards. She asks about Manami and her mother, and the guards tell her they are safe inside. Nice. We see that the building is well guarded, because it's where the transfer circle is located. Manami welcomes Lamas back, and they are happy everyone is safe. Hey. Boxo thinks about helping the people, and he decides to give them all free items for the day. This man has the ultimate power. Man could literally just give everyone free shit all the time. Man is an infinite potion dispenser. At night, we learn that the snake is normally the natural enemy of the frog monsters. Because they killed the frog monsters, the snake was able to get out and kill the village. But they didn't think of that before. And Boxo is surprised to see the villagers cooking it up for food. There's a huge line since he's giving away free items, and it even helps attract some new faces. He thinks it will make him even more money in the long run. And Bro thinking about his pocket the whole time? Man did not stop believing in that. What a legend. What a legend. We see he has even started selling alcohol. Mama he started gets selling alcohol! Man, is it W scam? W scam! What an actual legend. This man is the capitalist utopia that we all finally needed to have represented on our screen. Hassan needs to react to this anime. I, I would pay Hassan good money to react to this whole anime. I would literally be so happy. And I mean, actually watch it, not including times that he gets up to go to the bathroom. And Because if, if he reacts to this anime and he's just in the bathroom with his chair reacting to this scene, I will shit. Trunk, happy that everything turned out well. She is also happy seeing everyone gathered around him, and she thinks he has become an integral part of their lives. Uh...
The next day. Ah, uh, is it that awesome? That is awesome. Wow. Oh, that's so awesome. The people start the repairs, and Boxo is set up at the association, where there are plenty of people around. Lamas visits him, mentioning that the director gave her a Why personal. Is he, is he facing the? Why does he look so different every time? Gave her a personal request, and it's to help with removing the rubble. She takes Boxo over to the inn, and she starts moving the rocks, easily smashing them into pieces. Her cart gets full, and she prepares to take it to the dump, but Calroy suddenly appears. He offers to treat everyone to some of Boxo's items. Lamas yeah. gets excited, and Calroy tries to recruit her to his team, along with Boxo, but she instantly refuses. Damn. Calroy walks off rejected, and Lamas says she's too busy with helping rebuild the inn. Uh the next so day, awesome. Boxo is visited by a woman and her assistant. I love how Boxo doesn't get any say in this shit. <laughs> Boxo's just his pet right now. Lamas just wonders who they are, and the woman introduces herself. She has the glasses without the frames on top. Dog, that is some MILF energy. As a Kawi from the exchange house. She mentions they are there because it seems the village is long. I thought for sure there would be way more fan service than this. I thought this would be an etchy anime for sure. Because, like, how could you actually have a serious plot? And they can't. It's just goofy for the all the other reasons. On silver coins. Lamas thinks it must be because Boxo only takes silver coins and he can't- It literally is causing a financial crisis! Lamas thinks it must be because Boxo only takes silver coins and he can't believe she ratted him out. Akawi proposes- <laughs> She just told the IRS on him. She just told the IRS. <laughs> oh, God, dude. Exchanging for her gold coins, but Boxo isn't able to do it since he doesn't have an exchange function. Lama suggests they could just buy something with a gold coin and they will be able to get the silver coins as change. They end up with a whole chest full of silver coins, but the thief sees their exchange. Later on, we see an uh -oh. old man in front of Boxo, and we see he has added a lottery function. The man is devastated when he loses, wanting to- This is a massive scam. Holy shit, Boxo would be streaming on Kick right now. Boxo would get all the crypto gambling casino s sponsors in the world. Spin again, but he ends up getting dragged off by his wife. The young girl, Siori- Bro, he's just out here destroying families. Visits with a bunch of rocks to cause trouble but she drops them all when she is startled by his voice, and she gets- She was already there and startled by the voice and went to get rocks! Oh my god. ...carried off by some men. As she approaches again the next day, she is disappointed that her father is away. Boxo can tell she is feeling down, so he gives her a free juice, what and she sin. thanks him. What a sad giving his juice to children like that. Oh, that's ended wrong. Night, Boxo gets set up at the bathhouse. And well, I guess it's just an inanimate object, am I right? They can get naked, why not? And we see that he also sells hygiene products like- Sure, sure he does. Like shampoo. And condoms. And he seems to be a big hit. <laughs> they don't have women. <laughs> they don't have like naked girls walking around. They just have furries. With the furry creatures. Yay! The next day, the old man is back. And this time with his granddaughter. He teaches her about the lottery function. Peddling gambling to children? This is the most meta-relevant anime of all time. Boxo is a super villain. And the girl is excited to try. She actually ends up winning, and her grandfather can't believe it. She gets an item for free. When you finally win, you get some milk? She ends up just giving it to her grandfather to make him happy, awesome. saying she had a great time with him, and it seems Boxo rigged it for her. The next day. Damn. This is literally casinos rigging wins for the streamers so that the viewers could think that th there's this whole drama going on that uh, a lot of sp sponsored streamers suspiciously win big prizes. And it seems like the casino just rigs it for them to win so that people watching see that the gamblers are winning so that they get, get start gambling and their life gets destroyed. Is that not the most realistic thing you've ever seen in your life? The director approaches Boxo. He heard that Boxo now has the ability to disguise himself. Nani? So he asks him to hide out where a bunch of crimes have been taking place, so he can help identify the culprit. They are using a vending machine for reconnaissance missions. He ends up being set up, right outside the front of the association. Lamas wonders where he has gone, but Monami reminds her the director was borrowing him, so Lamas continues to help around the association. Boxo has a quiet day, but we see Siori looking around for him. She runs into Lamas, and she wonders if she has given any more thought to her proposal. However, Lamas says she's not going to sell Boxo. 
Damn. Siori says she would have enough money for the rest of her life, but Lamas refuses, saying Boxo is irreplaceable. Aww. Siori wonders what Aww. Boxo truly is, but even Aww. Lamas she just can't give up that that vending machine cock. Isn't sure. She thinks that since he can understand and respond to everything, she sees him the same as another person, and Boxo so is. So she owns him. What? How did that? Wait. Uh huh. Happy to hear she feels this way. Siori declares she will get Boxo one way or another, Whoa, but she leaves for the day, telling Lamas bitch. to take care of him until that day comes. Slave box. Boxo reappears, and Lamas is shocked to see him. But she tells him she missed him, and she is excited to tell him about her day. Man just gave up his disguise? She's literally dating this box. She is dating this vending machine right now. Next day, we see Boxo as he gets wheeled around on a cart, but it turns out he has actually been kidnapped, and he wonders where he's being taken. How does he wake up on a cart? Man sleeps? He's a vending machine. We see Boxo getting approached by a group of men. They tell him they were hired by the director to help reinforce the walls. So they tell him the director wants him to go with them so he can help feed the workers. Sure. Boxo notices the shady guy that tried to steal from him, but he thinks he must be reformed since he's working for the director. Wow, what an he idiot. He agrees to go with Oh my god, history's dumbest isekai protagonist. And it was a it was a tough decision. It was a tough contest. But man edged the rest of the competition out. Them, so the men load him onto their cart. But after eight hours, he comes to the realization of what's really going on. He wonders how and they eventually stop to have a break. While they are stopped, Boxo takes the chance to use his security camera to take photos of all of their faces. Sure, he has that now. He's approached by the thief, and the man threatens him to give them food. Boxo refuses, so the man stabs him, causing him to take some damage. <laughs> but the boss <laughs> They're threatening him because he can- This is why you should have never given anyone free food, you idiot. Reprimands the thief, telling him not to damage the merchandise. The boss tells Boxo to hand over all his money, but Boxo refuses. They know Boxo is able to repair himself, so the boss tells his men to rough him up. The men start bashing into him, and although Bruh. the damage isn't a lot, he wonders if there's anything he can do about it. He gets a notification that he can enhance his toughness by spending a thousand points, and it instantly makes him tougher, Let's reducing go. the damage from the attacks to zero. Let's go. The boss notices that Boxo doesn't seem to be repairing, getting worried they may have broken him, but the thief assures him it's fine. Boxo gives them some drinks, and the man is relieved he is still working. They all try out the drink, but it turns out to be disgusting. <laughs> you don't say. This is a sentient box. Because it was Boxo's lowest rated drink. They reach their base at night. I love how they say that like shitty vending machines definitely do exist right now. They just mugged a vending machine. That might be the saddest group of bandits in the history of, of isekai. It's like you have all these isekai bandits all over the place. They're normally like, you know, kidnapping women and enslaving furries and, and poisoning towns and stealing relics and shit. These guys mugged a vending machine. And Boxo gets taken inside. They tell a woman to take a look at him, God. but they get scared as she approaches. They just like me, for real, for real. It's like everyone in, in all the, the Twitch chats, all these guys that act like these absolute Giga Chad machos, and they're all incels. Like, you, you got the uh, all the Andrew Tate simps out there. They're like, woman, make me a sandwich. And then she, like, starts approaching him, and he just... Ah! <laughs> Yeah, bitches be crazy, am I right? Woman, do this. And then she just looks at him. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're going to see that one more time. So they just throw her the instructions and quickly run away. God damn, she looks crazy. I can fix her. The woman starts talking to Boxo, and he wonders if he should answer honestly. The woman can only say thank you and insert coin. And introduces herself as Hulami. And Dude, I love crazy women. And Boxo recognizes her as Lamas's friend. She's actually a magic item engineer, and it turns out she was also kidnapped. Let's Boxo go! A kidnapped woman! Didn't I literally say that normally bandits and isekai are kidnapping women? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we did not need to look too far ahead because you see... They already kidnapped women, so they get their badge of isekai banditry. So starts talking to her, and she is instantly impressed to see a magic item that can understand and speak with people. She reads the instructions, and she soon figures out how he can communicate. 
Yuami reveals she has experimented with trying to give magic items human intelligence, okay. but concluded it's not possible with their technology, so she started thinking about putting a human soul into an item oh, instead. Shit. Is that equivalent exchange? Something of equal value must be lost? Boxo is amazed she figured it out, and Yuami says she needs a drink from all her excitement. Boxo gives her one of his milk tea and she finds it delicious. Oh yeah, she just loves his milk. They keep on talking, and Boxo confirms he actually has a human soul and has memories of his past. Kulami wonders why he requires money, because normal magic items don't require any. True. Boxo decides to show her, transforming into his other form. Man just became a rainbow dildo. And Hulami realizes he must use the money to gain additional functions. She wonders what else he can do, so he shows her his barrier skill. She thinks it's some kind of wall, but Boxo lets her pass through, and Hulami is amazed he can even use a blessing, Bro, but Boxo great. is impressed she is working everything out so quickly. He's like, a woman? That's not a complete freaking idiot? I haven't met any of those in this entire anime so far, what? Hulami goes to sleep, and Boxo wonders if the people in the village have noticed that he's missing. At that moment, the bandits return, wanting to get payback on Hilami for scaring them, but Boxo suddenly transforms, turning into a magazine dispenser. Man is literally saving her life with porn. And he instantly attracts the man. Oh my freaking god, what is even going on right now? The men become too distracted. This is the greatest plot of all time. And they all decide to head back to their rooms, saying they have business to take care of. The next day, he comes in to give Hilami her Tons. food. Hulami is disappointed seeing a single loaf of bread, That's so Boxo- THERE'S LITERALLY AN INFINITE POTION GENERATOR IN HERE! Who decides to give her some of his food. He treats her to all kinds of oh different God, foods, he makes burgers. and she thinks he is even better than a restaurant. Hulami is completely stuffed, but the boss enters, wanting to know what she has figured out. Hulami doesn't want to cooperate, but the boss tells her she has two days to figure out how- Bro, just give him some porn. How to get Boxo's money. So he stuffed her, true, he put his meat in her mouth, oh my god, Boxo just keeps putting his meat in her mouth. Boxo thinks they need to find a way to escape I love how Boxo's like, mm, we need to find a way to escape, no shit. Before then, Hulami continues on with examining him, and their time is running out. Boxo thinks about making a distraction to give Hulami a chance to get away. What, what could he do? But Hulami has a serious talk with him, telling him not to think about sacrificing himself. He can't move, bro! Because the area is surrounded by monsters, so even if she got away, she wouldn't be able to survive. She gets tired, so she calls it for the night, but Boxa wonders what to do about their deadline. The night, there is suddenly a commotion outside, so he quickly wakes Hulami up. They realize there's a fight going on outside, oh God. and they suddenly hear Lamas's voice. We see the fight outside, Damn, and Lamas calls for Boxo, charging into the building, Hulami is surprised that Boxo is friends with Lamas, and she thinks they should be fine to just wait to be rescued. Let's go. But Hulami suddenly thinks they could be in trouble, because besides storing all their gold here, the bandits also have explosives. These are like bandits that you find on Discord to bully some kid. And some of the explosives go off. Oh, sure they do. Because they were here all along, they just decided to. Causing the ceiling to come Damn, crashing down. Good thing he has but barrier. Boxo protects them with Damn, his barrier. Hulami wonders if he can hold the barrier forever, but he admits that he can't. He thinks he would survive being crushed since he upgraded his toughness, but he worries for Hulami. Hulami realizes that his ability must use money, so she points out the bandit's stash of gold. Oh my god, dude, what is even happening? Boxo lets it through his barrier. And he jacks up the prices. He jacks off the prices on all his items, while Hulami deposits all the money into him. How did the bandits leave all their gold in a literal money sucker? I'm blown away here. Like I, I have never experienced bandits of this level of incompetence. Boxo gains an insane number of points, and he thinks he'll be able infinite money hack. Well, the whole bro's about to become the Hokage. Not until Lama saves them, but Hulami suddenly collapses. Boxo realizes she can't. He thinks about what he can do and he suddenly transforms, turning into an oxygen vending machine. She's literally sucking on his to live? Bro, girl, she just needs that, uh, that vending machine juice. There are vending machines for everything? Dude, at that point, have a gun vending machine. America style. Hulami is able to breathe, and Boxo is glad he was a vending machine fanatic in yeah, his past. she's sucking his Knowing air Knowing that out. in 19... Literally sucking out his ass air. What? 65. There were oxygen vending machines because there were concerns about air pollution. 
Hulamy oh thinks God. she would fall for him if he were a man. Is it really that easy? <laughs> Where did we go wrong, chat? Where did we go wrong? And even Boxo is charmed by her. Lamas makes it to them, even and Boxo she is over got, got a vending machine boner. Joy to finally find him. She slips through the barrier, crashing into him, but she cries thinking she had lost him. Very she wholesome. hugs onto him, apologizing for not watching him, oh, and he is glad to be reunited with her as well. Ah, uh, let's freaking go. Lamas eventually real she has nothing between her ears. realizes Hulami is also there, and Hulami is glad Very excited for the sperm bank vending machine that shows up to have all vending machine babies. They got out safely. Filmina wonders why Calroy helped out when there was no money involved. Calroy says he's just a nice guy, but Filmina knows he is trying to gain a favor from Boxo, and <laughs> Man risked his life. Teresa freaking vending machine. And Calroy said, Bro has a whole harem right now. I don't understand. How did we fail as a species? As they will achieve their dream by any means necessary. We see Lamas as a child, using her strength to catch fish with Hulami. Hulami thinks her parents will be happy, but we learn Lamas gets into trouble for constantly breaking things at home. Damn. She suddenly stands before Boxo, where she thanks him for saving her. But we see she is just dreaming, telling him not to leave her again. Hulami tells Boxo that after he was abducted, Lamas kept looking for him and didn't even sleep. She Aww. mentions their past, revealing that their village was wiped out and Lamas lost her parents. Despite having her strength, she was too scared to do anything, and it became her biggest oh regret. Oh my god, that's Boxo crazy. wants to do- That's a crazy backstory. You're just dropping that incredible emotional drama on us right now? Just out of nowhere? It's like, oh, by the way, this girl, this airheaded, aloof, kind of bimbo, kind of idiot over here that's incredibly strong. Yeah, her parents got killed in front of her, and she didn't do anything because she was afraid of her own strength. Whatever he can to help her, and she dreams they'll be together forever. Let's go. The next day, Hulami decides to stick around in the village, and Lamas heads off to do some work. Hulami and Boxo get approached by Sui's bodyguards. Right. The man tells them right, that Sui right. will be coming to make a request from them, and he hopes that they will accept the request. The men panic as they hear Sui approaching, so they quickly leave. Sui introduces herself to Hulami, oh, and she asks for a favor. Oh, no. Hulami wonders what she wants, and Sui explains there is a gathering of merchant families where they reveal their newest magic items. The organizer is her rival Kana, and she gets mad even thinking What is this face? What am I even looking at right now? Oh my god! About her. Hulami thinks it sounds interesting, and Boxo agrees as well. They go over to the event, and Boxo looks around for Sui's rival. Sui approaches her, and they pretend to get along. Kana This is so dumb. Why does every anime need to have this weird lolly face-off rivalry? Petition, looking over at Hulami and Boxo, but she is confident she will win. The presentations sure. begin, and we see the first participant show off his latest invention. A stick. He introduces it as a magic weapon that can transform. Hulami My magic weapon! It's a stick! He thinks it's a good idea, but it turns out he is just putting different attachments on- <laughs> thing I've ever seen. The magic rod! This is the worst thing I've ever seen. This is worse than the rod from Redo of Healer. Like, that is an S-tier pathetic weapon. And everyone is disappointed. After a number of other lackluster presentations, Hulami starts to get dis- that? It's a wiggling flower? Pointed. After a number of other lackluster presentations, Hulami yeah. starts to get bored, but it comes to Kana's turn. Her engineer reveals a robot. <laughs> Oh my god! Wait a second. The last one was a stick that they could put a shovel head on. And she has a working robot JoJo character. Claiming he has succeeded in the dream of giving intelligence to a magic item. Hulami is shocked, thinking he must have put someone's soul inside the robot. And she notes that it's banned by the Magic Engineer Association oh no, because it's too dangerous, mentioning that a whole town was destroyed in the past because of it. The That's robot right. impresses everyone as it can follow commands, but it suddenly starts to go wild. Look at that mouth and tell me that this robot was not a sex robot. Wild, Insert wanting to kill cock. I mean coin. Kill everyone. Oh, it decided to kill everyone. This is like the degenerate fantasy of some crazy AI fetishes. The man tries to turn it off, but he gets thrown away as the robot blames him for awakening it. You have given me sentience, and now I will kill humanity! Alright, dude. Hulami sure. orders Sui's men to help out, but they all get thrown away. 
Hulami jumps onto it, targeting its magic seal, and she manages to turn it off. What just happened? All of the security cards couldn't do anything. She's like, all right, I guess I have no choice. Jumps on it, turns it off. Apologizing to the soul that was used. The crowd suddenly realized- She literally pulled a scar and she was like, This chimera can never be reverted to human. Big brother. And then she killed it. This is who Hulami is, and we learn she has quite the reputation for being a troublemaker. Damn. Hulami claims all her incidents were from her youth, and Sui declares her victory over Kana. Damn. After some time, winter arrives and we see all of the town's restaurant owners in a meeting led by Minami. They discuss okay. the arrival of a popular change. I can't get over how like this show will jump from uh, the most unserious thing in the world to, you know, kidnapping women. <laughs> Woman kidnapped? The restaurant owners are gathered together to discuss something important. We didn't have this level of important discussion when there was a girl getting kidnapped. Main restaurant, and they worry about going out of business. Munami reveals Boxo as their secret weapon, and she bribes him by giving <laughs> Llamas a discount at the inn. We see the restaurant what? has opened up. And they She's like, yo, I want you to work for us. And in turn, that girl that you like will help her out. Epic level five simp, baby. They have a huge line of people wanting to get in. Lamas and Hilami go and try out the food, but they find it's pretty average. Thinking it Damn, nothing, nothing beats that sweet, sexy juices that you're sucking out of that vending machine, if you know what I'm saying. Doesn't even compare to Boxo's food. Lamas thinks the food is bland. And Boxo Damn. thinks that it's because seasoning isn't cheap in this world. But seasoning isn't cheap in this world. I could manifest things from the ether! This gives him an idea. In Minami's next meeting, she thinks that they need to come up with a new menu to save their customers. They all bring out their latest creations, and Llamas and Hilami taste test the food. And it's all shit. They give suggestions on how to make it better, while Boxo transforms giving them a sample of what it should taste like. Bro, they literally cannot compete with the vending machine. All the owners rush to get advice, and they become inspired by Boxo's samples. We see that at the chain restaurant, all the owners have set up food stalls up. Oh my god, dude. How, what has this anime become? I, will, I miss the good old days when they used to mix Coke and Mentos to defeat giant frog raid bosses, and now it's just unseasoned chicken that a bunch of white men are trying to outside, offering their new dishes, and they start to attract uh, the people waiting in line. The people are amazed by all the, the new- The video skipped the part about the condoms? What?! New foods, turning out to be a huge success, and the restaurant ends up going out of business and closing down. Damn. As all the owners celebrate, Calroy approaches Boxo. Damn. He tries to invite Boxo on. Dude, this guy simps so hard. Every episode, man shows up. Mm, hey, Boxo. Wanna- want me to insert cock? I mean- Coin. On campaign, but Boxo instantly declines. Kelroy reminds him how he helped out when he got abducted, and Boxo considers changing his true, mind, true. but Kelroy tells him to talk it over with Lamas. Hulami thinks that most people would want the opportunity to join Kelroy's group, and she wonders what Lamas wants. Lamas says she okay. wants to fight so she can get stronger. Damn, Lamas out here with that character arc. But Hulami wonders if she is after revenge and Boxo wants Revenge. to help her in any way he can, turning into a flower machine, and he- The unstoppable Riz of this box. He cheers Lamas up. Boxo thinks about what Hulami told him about Lamas's past, and as spring approaches, when the hunters will become active again, he wants to be able to protect her. He is suddenly approached by a girl, but she quickly hides behind him as the guards approach. The guard gets some stew, and his friend wonders why he keeps eating the same thing, but the guard insists it's his favorite. We learn that the girl okay. is into him, but she- We learn that the girl is into him. He's just too shy to make a move. The guard or the, the freaking box? Move. Bo oh my god, Boxo! The endless wingman. The wingman of infinite condoms. Boxo decides to help her out, transforming into a new form and giving her some vegetables. He- What? What? Gives her a bunch of other ingredients as well, and she realizes- He's giving her the ingredients to make a home-cooked meal. How does she- he, This guy has fresh vegetables just coming out of his ass. He, he, uh, this is unbelievable. All the guards come, he gives them ready-made food. A woman comes to the kitchen with you. Here's some random vegetables. As he is telling her to cook the man his favorite stew. The girl thanks him, and we learn they ended up getting together. Spring Aww, arrived. Riz demon out here. And it seems Lamas and Boxo have agreed to go on Kelroy's expedition. 
We learn they are going to check up on the crocodile monsters. The monsters are some of the least inspired things I've ever seen in this anime. They are one of the three main monster factions in their area, and after dealing with the frog boss and the twin head snake, they are going to check to see if the crocodile monsters have over-multiplied as well. The group prepares to leave, and Hulami reveals she is also going, saying that the director hired her to perform an ecology survey. Yeah. They head off, and Kelroy is glad to finally get out of the town. Bro. They are suddenly attacked by some frog monsters. I thought they finished- they, you just said we finished with the frog monsters! But the group fights them off. Lamas wants to get involved, and she thinks about throwing rocks. Boxer Damn. thinks throwing would be a good use of her strength, so he gives her a reinforced bottle to throw. Man, is just infinite ammo. God she damn. gives it her best. Get Lamas misses her punches. She is literally right in front of her enemy and she misses punching. You think that she's gonna throw stuff? But she ends up completely missing. Damn. The group stops for a break and they enjoy all of Boxo's food. They are glad they don't need to hunt for their food. Boxo shows <laughs> Dude, off his new function, just, adding on an emergency the, box. And bro, laziness hacks. The laziness hacks. It turns out to contain the parts of a portable toilet. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an isekai protagonist that could become a toilet. The group thinks it's amazing, and Kelroy tries to take credit for it since he convinced Boxo to join, but the group doesn't buy it. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. continue on, yeah, and Kelroy yeah, mentions yeah. they are entering the crocodile's territory. He decides to send Akka and Shiro to scout, so they head off while the rest of the group waits. When they return, they report that they found a group of around 30 crocodiles. Oh no! Hulami mentions crocodiles. that a normal group is between 10 to 50, and Kelroy thinks that since there aren't an abnormally large amount of them, they can just leave them alone. But Filmina mentions that the crocodiles go for a high price, so she wants to take them out. Damn! These are sentient creatures! Creatures that can use tools! And they're not a threat to you! And you just want to kill them? Based. Kelroy ends up agreeing, and they decide to rest up for the night. As they sleep, we see Hulami telling Lamas to be careful. She wishes there was something she could do for the fight, mentioning the crocodiles are weak to the cold, and Boxo suddenly turns into an ice machine. Oh my god, dude. Holy crap. Hulami gets an idea, wondering how much ice he can make, and we see Boxo dumping ice into the river the next day. Oh my god, dude. I literally get so mad sometimes. Dude, give them guns. <laughs> the crocodiles end up all getting out from the cold. He dumped so much ice in there. <laughs> and Kelroy thinks that- You know, we started off with like, wow, this is the lamest isekai protagonist of all time. I'm not gonna lie, this might be the most overpowered isekai protagonist of all time. Literally can- literally cre Man could create something out of nothing. Dude, Edward Eldrick is crying somewhere right now. This is their chance. He asks Filmina to create a fog, but she says she can't cover such a large area. They wonder what they should do. Well, good thing that he can become a fog machine. And Boxo turns into another machine. He starts dumping dry ice into the river. I was joking. I was literally kidding. Man pulled the trick out of Scooby-Doo's hat right now. And it creates fog over the whole area. Killed all the fish in the lake too, by the way. Kelroy tries to take credit once again. But Filmina says Boxo is more useful than him. Damn! Kelroy gets depressed thinking Damn. he's useless. But they end up having- You don't got Riz like this box! ...heading off to hunt the crocodiles. Hulami is left with Boxo, and she explains her real mission from the director is to investigate the appearances of the boss monsters. They are meant to be quite rare, but after two of them have appeared, she wonders if something oh is going on. God. I wonder if that's foreshadowing that they'll get attacked by the boss monsters while the team is away. There is suddenly a huge crash, and the group comes rushing back. We see Llamas unconscious, and they are being chased by the crocodile boss. Who could have seen that coming? Damn, that, that's some that's some really good eco-terrorism going on. That's that's some, some lovable foreshadowing. Good foreshadowing, guys. I love when something foreshadows the thing that happens literally three seconds after. Kalroy tells Hulami to jump on, but she doesn't want to leave Boxo. However, he pushes her away with his barrier, and Kelroy grabs onto her. The infinite Riz! The infinite Riz! Boxo transforms and starts making noise to grab the boss's attention. He upgrades his durability a karaoke machine. his toughness, but he still gets blown away by the boss, and he loses a thousand points from the hit. Boxo thinks his barrier won't be enough. Why is he blushing? He wants to protect the group, so he transforms once again, and he shoots some fried chicken lunches at the boss. 
The boss starts to eat it, so Yo, he spits out a whole mountain of them, but the boss ends up eating him in a single bite. Oh my God. Boxo finds himself inside the boss's stomach, oh and God. he notices his points are rapidly decreasing. Bro, just dump some crap in there. Make him puke him out. Make him, make him get diarrhea. Put some... Dude, you're a vending machine. You know how many medicine vending machines they are? You could poison the crap out of him. Just, just shit aspirin into his stomach. He transforms into a laundry dispenser, uh, attacking better. with Tide Pods. <laughs> he's literally, he's, he failed the Tide Pod challenge. He made this dinosaur giant crocodile monster fail the Tide Pod challenge. And it starts to give the boss a stomachache. Oh my God, Boxo I literally knows it's not. predicted it. So he turns into a gas machine and he fills the boss's insides a with gas. Gas machine? Oh my God, he blows that, he blows him up. He then turns into his heating mode and he summons a can into his microwave. Together with some paper, he heats it all up, and he manages to start a fire. He shoots it out of his barrier, causing an enormous explosion. Man is literally a bomb. He is a bazooka. And we see Boxo is oh the my God. only thing that remains. Oh, Lord. The boss drops a special Soloed coin, him. but as he takes it, the ground suddenly splits, and Boxo falls through the ground. Sure he does. But that's where this video ends. Damn, on the cliffhanger! What? Dude, this was one of the wildest rides I have ever been on. I I have never, ever expected ever to watch something quite this insane, but I did, apparently. So with that all said and done, on that fantastic note, we are watching another one of these recaps on terrible isekai anime. Maybe next time. Definitely leave a like and subscribe. Like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. Stay weird, fam.